Grew up in a small town. Football and basketball were my first loves. Became too short to play basketball, but just big enough to play football. Had a great career, drafted by the Atlanta Falcons. And now it is a touchdown. Had a couple of years with the Tennessee Titans, retired with the New England Patriots. Brady out to Crumpler. Touchdown, Algie Crumpler. When I retired, I didn't want to lift another weight. Didn't want to work out anymore. I sat down, I gained about 100 pounds and uh, started experiencing a little health issues. I'm highly arthritic, pre-diabetic. Uh, my blood pressure has gone up. My body just kept aching more. My knees kept aching more, my back kept aching more. Despite his mounting health problems, Algy, like many other former pro athletes, didn't seek help. I was afraid to go to the doctors and get checked up because I didn't want to know what was happening to my body. You know, that fear of the unknown. Food was his comfort, and now he's not moving at all. Now he's not burning any, any calories, and now all the weight just starts going up and up and up and up. 350, 375, 395, and it's like, man, this got to stop. You know, I just don't want to be taking medicine for the rest of my life. I remember several years ago, uh, the NFL rolled out a program for the former players to announce their draft pick. And Algie was one of our first players to ever do that, maybe. And he announced the pick. And the night that he should have been really proud, he was totally insecure about the feedback he got from how big he looked on stage. And as his friend, that was really heartbreaking for me to see this guy that I've known to be so full of life. and literally one of the best at his position that's ever played the game. And all of that is leading to him being not the happy, um, go-lucky person that I knew and the person that really wants to enjoy life. I missed a lot of vacations, you know, with my family because I just didn't want to hop on a ride. Um, I didn't want to take my shirt off at the beach. I just rather just stayed at home. And that's just not the way to live, especially when you had a career that was successful, built the life that I wanted to live, just wasn't there physically or mentally. It felt to me like he was that guy that was drowning in an issue um, and didn't really know how to, how to help himself. Before he would kind of get up and he'd just kind of mosey his way through the morning and not really have a purpose. And then years down the road, all of a sudden you don't feel good and everything's falling apart and you have to try to get back there. And it's really hard. Some people uh, really struggle. You know, that's, that's been one of the things I've noticed uh, with a lot of guys is that, you know, when, when they move on from playing in the NFL, uh, there, there's a void. We got paid to work out. It was really what it came down to. Our whole life was working out, running, lifting weights, staying in shape, conditioning, and you lose it, and you lose it relatively quickly. And I know Algie went through that transition where he was really beat up, wanted to decompress, and then you have to figure out right, how you work out as a civilian. You don't have training table, you don't have the protein shake area, and you don't have so many things right at your fingertips. You're like, ah, forget it. I'll just eat that because it's right there. Whatever it is, donut. Health problems among retired NFL players are extraordinarily common. Multiple surveys involving thousands of former players find they often experience significant weight gain during retirement. They also report higher than average accounts of chronic pain, hypertension, blood sugar irregularities, and sleep apnea. Algie Crumpler had all of these symptoms, and his most critical health metrics were all in the red zone. It's red, 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 and I'm like, okay, this isn't good. My body just kept aching more. My knees kept aching more, my back kept aching more, uh, and I just kept gaining weight. All players are gonna have transitional issues because once you leave the game of football, there's nothing else that you could do in life that gives you the same high. Since 2016, Emory Healthcare, the state's largest academic healthcare system, has been the official team healthcare provider of the Atlanta Falcons. Emory Healthcare physicians serve as the head team physician for the Falcons and provide care to their players both on and off the field. Emory Healthcare and the Falcons were looking for ways to also help former players having health struggles. That's when they had an idea 
If we could get Emory Healthcare to get involved and bring expertise to creating a case study with him and, and create this documentary that, that goes through the process, then when we got to the other side, not only would we have a story to tell, but I truly believe we could change his life. How's everybody doing? I'm Algie. The journey begins when Algae meets his care team. One of the things, you know, about medicine nowadays is it is a team sport. And that's why we've got a number of people from different specialties that we've invited to participate. And what our goal today is for everyone to meet each other, get a sense of your story, a little bit about your medical history. And then after that, we'll go offline and try and make a plan. I think it's safe to say that if Algae had not made a decision to take control of his own health, sought the partnership and teamwork with Emory Healthcare, that undoubtedly he would have been taken from us at far too young an age. I'll do really well as long as we have a plan in place. He is very competitive. So when he sets a goal, he's going to hit that goal because he doesn't want to tell anybody he didn't reach something he was going for. Algie's journey starts with a visit to an Emory Healthcare primary care physician for a full checkup and analysis. How are you? Good to meet you. Good to meet you as well. I understand you're 40. 40 years old. And you're here for us to get you back in shape. If you can. Has more than the average amount of mileage on him for a 40 year old man. As we go forward, the specialist will get more narrow and deeper in their focus. Good to see you again. Saul Jacobs. Hey, Dr. Jacobs. Welcome. I do endocrinology, so my piece in this was to address some of the metabolic issues. The majority of the country is, is overweight. With that weight gain comes cardiovascular risk, risk for things like abnormal glucose, abnormal lipids, high blood pressure. Have you used the pants before? No, I'm not familiar with them. To help algae manage his appetite and lower his diabetes risk, Dr. Jacobs prescribes Saxenda a self-injected medication, and algae is trained on how to use the injector. Estimates are that over 80 million of us have abnormal glucose, that's pre-diabetes. If you then add the approximate 30 million patients in this country with diabetes, you're at 110 million, it's, it's a third of the country. He's on the right path with his lifestyle modification, we want him to keep up with the diet, Breathe normally. keep up with the exercise as he's able. Probably testing my strength, not yours on that one. <laughs> Mr. Crumpler, how you doing? Algy visits an orthopedic sports medicine specialist who has helped many pro athletes recover from injury. Have you started an exercise program yet? Yes. Okay, have your knees been bothering you more since you started? Or My right that... knee has been bothering me more. Like a lot of former um, athletes, especially NFL players, he suffered a lot of abuse to his body during his playing days. Multiple surgeries, both of his knees have been operated on multiple times. His shoulders have been operated on, on both sides. All right, bend forward towards your toes, kind of far down as comfortable. Traditional orthopedic treatment would say, well, if you don't get better with therapy and medications or a cortisone shot, you just have to suffer until you have a knee replacement done eventually. But obviously, someone algae's age is way too young to, to consider that. We have found other options to kind of delay or hopefully prevent some of these surgeries. Next up for Algy is a thorough psychiatric exam. His wife, Jen, has also been asked to attend the session. The conversation was held behind closed doors without cameras present to give the couple privacy. You know, it's not easy for me to seek help or to, you know, reach out to Emory doctors and say, hey, can you help me? I think Algy is, is very motivated at this point to, to make a change. One of the things that we're working on is to engage people in his social network, to be sort of cheerleaders for him to move forward. Algie has joined a kickboxing gym near his home and works out regularly with his former teammate and friend, Chris Crocker, who faced his own transition issues upon retirement. I didn't want to do hardcore workouts and I mean, I didn't want to really run a lot, but I just had to figure it out, and this has really worked for both of us. Algae has the fastest hands in the gym. 
It's incredible a man his size has that quick. I got a long way to go, but I know that. So I'm not frustrated by that. Good to see you. How are you doing? You ready to do this? I'm ready. All right, let's get you back. Already nearly 60 pounds lighter, Algy goes to visit sports cardiologist Dr. Jonathan Kim for a demanding but very important heart stress test. So we'll have you on our uh, treadmill here. Grab your arm again. You keep doing what you're doing. I'll work around you. You're doing good. We wish everybody in the general population would have this type of drive and motivation. And unfortunately, a lot of individuals can't do that or don't want to, and that's when they get into trouble later on with true cardiac disease and heart attacks and congestive heart failure, uh, true diabetes stroke, all of these bad things. His VO2, which stands for oxygen consumption, is above normal. His heart rate zones, which for somebody in the general population would be lower, are higher than average. But I think this is really good. They've been more than accommodating and answered all the questions that I've had. The coronavirus crisis is changing so fast uh, that these maps can't keep up. The great shutdown of 2020 is underway. The, the thing with COVID, being in quarantine, I'm walking every day and my knee flares up. I mean, it flares up really bad where I just can't, I can't do anything. And I'm afraid to call Emory because I'm seeing all these people and the ERs are full and I'm thinking that COVID's the only thing that's going on in the world, but you know, you still need medical care. And I called Dr. Mountner and he was able to get me in and, and uh, get some fluid off of my knee. And without those previous relationships, I'm not sure that would have happened. That new study on weight gain during the pandemic, researchers at the University of California, San Francisco, finding that people have gained an average of one and a half pounds every month. Many people gained weight during the pandemic, algae among them. I gained about 30 pounds at one point. We were cleaning out our pantry. And so, yeah, uh, thankfully, I wasn't I wasn't drinking during COVID. Uh, now I eat a lot more balanced meals. I got that 30 pounds is gone. It's been gone. Crucially, the support of Algie's family and social circle was there when he needed it to get through his COVID setback and beyond. You know, we're on a group chat. It's a few of the former teammates and uh, we post a lot of our workouts. He's posting something every day. We've reached out to each other at different moments and if we feel like uh, any, either of us needs something, it's great to have that, not only physically, but mentally. No matter what happens, we're gonna always stay connected. We're gonna be there for each other and support each other. Algie's wife, Jen, says the way Emory Healthcare physicians approached Algie's care was as important as the medical plan itself. They didn't try to give him crazy amounts of information to scare him into doing what was right or to make changes. They just gave him all the information, let him see it. They told him, these are the changes we want you to make. And they kept checking up on him. And he really felt like he could talk to them and let them know if things weren't going right or if he was frustrated. Now more than four years into his journey, Algie is much more fit and in control of his health and his outlook on life. Oh, dang it. You made it. More importantly, his dangerous health metrics have all turned from red to green. Don't have any red now. Doesn't mean I need to stop, but don't have any red now. To say I'm shocked would be an understatement of what has happened. I feel like he's the guy that was playing, like that guy's back. And to see someone living their life and being happy and back where, like, that's what life's about. I mean, especially when that's someone you care about. There are plenty of players that have Algie's issues that he was dealing with. And I just wish they would find partners like Emery that could help them cross over into what is a normal life and, and a, not the easiest transition for sure. I hope that people will look at this and say, if he could do this, I could do this. The only thing you learn about your health when you're playing is whether you're healthy enough to play or you're not healthy enough to play. And now it's just you and your family. So find out what's going on with your body. I'm glad I'm committed to a routine at this point in my life that my health matters. I continue to work. I know that.